it's a software problem. I'm yes. putting my career on the line. What if I told you that these two mice were the same chronological age, but one is physically older because of a software glitch? This glitch is what Dr. David Sinclair and colleagues are betting on as the cause of aging. It explains why some people age faster than others, but what's the evidence supporting this theory? And more importantly, how can understanding this theory help us? Slow aging right now and reverse aging in the near future. Stay tuned to find out more. The theory we're talking about is Sinclair's Information Theory of Aging, or ITA. Prior to the ITA, the predominant theory of aging fell into two main buckets. The first bucket has damage accumulation theories, which suggests that our body's ability to repair damage slows as we age, resulting in a buildup of cellular and molecular damage. These theories are akin to a car accumulating rust, tire wear, and engine problems over time. Examples include accumulation of DNA mutations in our cells as we age, despite our robust repair systems. The general idea is that the higher the burden of mutations, the shorter the lifespan. Another example is the shortening of telomeres, which are the protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes. Shorter telomeres have been linked to higher risk of disease and shorter lifespan. The second bucket includes programmatic theories, which argue that aging is encoded into living organisms. In other words, a program that wreaks increasing amounts of havoc on our cells and their components. Here, examples include the developmental and hyperfunction theories. Both theories heavily overlap and in general suggest growth and development are the root cause of aging. Sinclair's ITA builds on these previous theories with an epic twist. Epic. Get it? If not, you'll catch on later. So let's dive in. Sinclair's theory argues that one of the root causes of aging is specific DNA damage called double-stranded DNA breaks. Trillions of double-stranded DNA breaks occur in our bodies every day from factors such as sunlight exposure. But don't be alarmed, our bodies have specialized cellular machinery to repair these breaks. His lab has shown that causing mice to have more than usual double-stranded DNA breaks accelerates their aging. These accelerated aging mice have more gray fur and a reduced body weight, grip strength, mobility, vision, and hearing compared to their peers. You might be thinking, Okay, so what's the big deal if our bodies repair these double-stranded DNA breaks? Well, Sinclair's team have found that double-stranded DNA breaks disrupt the epigenome. The epigenome is a collection of molecules in cells that instruct the genome what to make, when to make it, and where to make it, without changing the underlying A, T, G, and C sequence of our DNA. It is a software that enables stem cells to turn into a variety of cells such as nerve, muscle, and skin, each of which have nearly identical genomes or hardware. The epigenome does its duty by turning specific genes on or off. For example, liver-specific genes are normally turned on only in the liver. Sinclair's team found that double-stranded DNA breaks cause the repair machinery and parts of the epigenome to get jumbled in at least two ways. The first is that the repair machinery doesn't always return to their original locations. And the second is that the epigenome around the double-stranded DNA breaks allows for nearby genes to be turned on or off inappropriately. The result of this jumbling are cells losing their identities, which causes them to stop being able to do their functions properly. For example, liver cells not being able to store glucose properly, resulting in higher blood glucose levels in older individuals. As this process occurs throughout our bodies during aging, more cells start to lose their identities. This contributes to organ malfunction, which leads to age-related diseases and ultimately culminates in death. It's worth noting that Sinclair's team did not see any increase in the amount of mutations in the genome. Coming back full circle, the epic twist is that Sinclair's ITA argues it's the loss of epigenetic rather than genetic information that drives aging. Another way to put it is comparing the double-stranded DNA breaks to a scratched DVD, which the reader aka the epigenome, cannot read easily. So as the epigenome repairs itself, errors inadvertently occur, resulting in abnormal gene expression and cell identity. As Sinclair puts it, but as logical as it may sound, the ITA has its limitations. The theory does not account for senescent cells and associated inflammation 
or inflammaging, nor depletion of stem cells causing the premature aging in the mice. Plus, the ITA is not the only reason as to why we age. As we said at the beginning, there are other causes of aging, including genetic mutations such as those found in the LMNA gene, or oxidative damage. Ultimately, Sinclair's theory makes great strides in our understanding of the aging process and will serve as at least a stepping stone for more complete theories down the road. Case in point, Dr. Pedro de Magales recently proposed a theory of aging where he suggests that aging is caused by an inherent flaw in the epigenome or actual software, which leads to damage accumulation, not the other way around. In the meantime, how does the ITA affect us and how can we apply these findings to slow our aging? Well, one critical thing you should do is protect your DNA. Here's examples of what to look out for. Ultraviolet radiation. Minimize sun exposure during peak UV light and avoid tanning beds. Infrared radiation. Avoid unnecessary medical x-rays and airport x-rays. Mutagenic chemicals. Avoid as much as possible. Examples include clastogens and other synthetic chemicals, such as BPA, which may negatively affect double-stranded DNA process. Sinclair also recommends other general health and lifestyle advice that may slow the loss of epigenetic information. It's essentially just eat less often. That's how simple it is. Skip a meal, skip the snacks. Plant-based foods will, will be better than meat-based foods. Exercise, be cold, be hot. But in general, losing your breath is important. High-intensity exercise, you don't need a lot. Make sure we sleep well and we have the right rhythm. One thing I'll add is that if you're adopting these interventions, it's worth testing your biological age, your body's actual age, to make sure they're effective. Because we're each unique and what's good for one person may be ineffective or even detrimental to another. One of the better current ways to test your biological age is by using epigenetic clocks, such as True Age Pace offered by True Diagnostics. The True Age Pace clock has the following advantages over other epigenetic clocks. It uses the Dundin Pace clock highly improved third generation clock. It's reviewed and improved by independent board certified physicians. It's highly precise, meaning that it has low variability between retests. It's highly predictive. Studies have shown that faster aging as assessed by true age pace raises the risk of dying earlier and developing chronic disease, including cardiovascular diseases and Alzheimer's disease. It correlates to quality of life metrics, including grip strength, balance, and cognitive function. And lastly, it responds to interventions, one of the only clocks to predict improvements in health. In one study, the Dundon Pace clock showed a reduction in the rate of aging in individuals who restricted calories by approximately 11% over two years. If you're interested in testing your biological age with True Age, see the description for a 12% discount. If you want to know more detail about what to do to slow aging, how to test your biological age, and what longevity interventions are around the corner, subscribe and check out these videos.